Warcraft has lost its way. That's a large proclamation. I do not mean that the game is bad. If you've been paying attention to this channel, for months we've been saying that Dragonflight may be the best WoW has been in a decade. Content cadence, reaction speed to feedback, quality of changes, quality of content, it's all there. But something is missing. And it's missing goddamn bad. Here is where I'd like to make a comparison to that Simpsons episode. The one where Bart sold his soul and later realized that nothing's quite right without it. But Modern WoW actually does have a soul. You can tell. Designers across the game are pouring themselves into their work. Between the stories of love, of loss, of everything in between, go play the Blue Dragon quest line. Gear looks better than ever. Items are way more interesting. There's so much dialogue in quests that you really do get a feeling these aren't just NPCs, but are fully realized characters in the world. So, why does it feel a bit hollow? <laughs> in crawling the darkest depths of memories and data to find out Warcraft, the IP is missing, we have discovered, developed a hypothesis. There are two major things that Warcraft is missing, and a third, which is our sponsor. AG1 by Athletic Greens, because why not get the ultimate nutritional insurance policy? I've been slurping down AG1 for years, long before they reached out to us, so I'm very happy to have them on the team. Right, AG1 is a vitamin, mineral, and probiotic drink that has got your foundational nutritional bases covered. And that's why I like it. Just nice, simple, all in one. Drink it every morning. Done. Now, I love this because it's packed with probiotics that boost my gut health. You see, your gut is like the friggin' mastermind of your body. It is so important. There's a whole army of gut microbiota there that are, that are orchestrating your, your brain, your immune system, lots of things key to your overall health. AG1's probiotics support optimal gut health. I mean, seriously, you've got all these, like, I don't know, however many billion uh, or more <laughs> workers sitting there in your gut. You may as well invest in them because they're working for you for free. But that's not all. AG1 also contains a mix of adaptogens, vitamins, minerals, essentially making sure that your nutritional needs are met. And also, tastes brilliant too. So if you're ready to give AG1 a shot, visit athleticgreens.com forward slash bellular, and they'll hook you up with five free travel packs, which is perfect for just whenever you're on the move. And as a bonus, they'll throw in a year's supply of vitamin D3 plus K2. So don't wait and power up your health, athleticgreens.com forward slash bellular. The first is obvious. It's just not cool to people looking at it. One of the reasons Shadowlands sold a crazy amount was because of Sylvanas. You know her, she's evil, she's cool. She fought the Lich King, you know him, he's cool, he's evil. She then split one of the most recognizable helms in all of gaming in two, tearing a portal to the afterlife. Gripes over Bolvar jobbing aside, it did what it needed to. It got people's blood pumping. In Legion cinematic, Varian foreshadows his own death, then he jumps off a crashing airship and fights a legion of demons in the water. Shortly after, he would destroy basically a Jaeger mech. Because he's just that cool. Then, in 7.2's ending, Illidan busted open a portal to Argus said that it's time to force the hand of fate and set the stage for incredible hype as we went into 7.3. As the trailer almost screamed at us, everything has led to this. Before that, we had Warlords of Draenor, and I usually joke about heavy metal and beer, because those things are awesome, but that is basically the truth behind it. Everyone knows what's in this cup. And that's why the scene matters so much. Troy Baker's Gul'dan and Kevin Michael Richardson's Grom deliver a back and forth so low pitch and growly you can feel your very bones rumble. Everyone knows what would have happened had Garrosh not dove in at that moment. And despite these being bad guys, everyone loved hearing Grom roar in victory, roar for freedom. The expansion itself did drop that ball, yes, but the cinematic going into it was the most Warcraft anything had ever been, and the numbers reflected it. 
Even back in Mists of Pandaria's 5.4, when people started to come back to the game after not vibing with early Mists, we had Garrosh destroying the Veil with the heart of an old god while Taran Zhu was trying to fight him off, leading to this absolutely awesome showdown and Garrosh cementing himself as an incredible villain. And you may have noticed right now, I'm just talking about cinematics, and that's because they're the marketing tool for the broad audience. For the kind of sales that WoW wants, that's their first shot. If someone sees the cinematic, their blood pumps, their neurons fire, they've passed the first test. Then, the game has got to follow up. But if they see it and don't care, and it looks mid, there's not much the game can do. You can have all the game designers, all the systems designers, all the artists in the universe, but if that trailer and that first impression is, meh. Don't really see what's so exciting about that. The game's screwed. The first thing we noticed is the cinematic needs to focus on a villain, or at the very least, their impact. Three cinematics in WoW's history don't have a recognizable villain as the main focus, and two of them coincide with WoW's weakest launches, Mists of Pandaria and Dragonflight. In the others, you have Illidan, Arthas, Deathwing, the Iron Horde, the Legion, and Sylvanas. Twice. Although in BFA, you could kind of pick your side. We'll discount Vanilla because that was a different beast entirely. And it turns out that villains just work, but not alone. The second thing you need is a speech, or at least some memorable dialogue. Illidan spitting, you are not prepared. Taranis's poetic letter to his lost son. Deathwing's growls of anger and hatred. Grom's incredible victory cry. Varian's musings on peace and war. All these are incredible for setting a scene, giving players the context that they'll be fighting in and making them care. Combined, the focus on a villain and a speech, usually by them or about them, sets the stage. It's, in marketing terms, the call to action. Everyone watching knows the mission. You gotta kill the bad guy, but it's going to be a goddamn epic adventure. The enemy is a villain that you can see yourself in, because while they are unquestionably evil, it comes from a position you can understand. You know the saying about wanting to be someone or be with them? It's kind of like that. These villains were so iconic that you either wanted to be them or their unquestionable evil made you want to put them down. Not like they were kicking a puppies kind of evil, but it was in their very soul. Something about a villain just attracts us. Like, uh, I don't know, all those weird people who get super horny about Ted Bundy. A good villain, a good anti-hero. Look at so many of the shows that resonate with people. Walter White, anti-hero, as an example. Dragonflight, then, is just not cool in that same way. The announcement trailer had some stakes for Koronos, a statue we'd never met before, but positive aspiration just doesn't work. It doesn't work the same way feeling a dangerous villain's impact does. The cinematic with the two dragon riding characters showed off Razageth amidst people whooping and cheering. There was no context for her as a villain. She didn't seem uber threatening. It was missing that call to action, the driving force that made people want to rush out and buy the game. A powerful, corrupted thing we needed to kill. And no, uh, as a catchphrase, Hashtag harness the power was a limp, embarrassingly mushy noodle. And if you don't remember, that was the marketing tagline they used for Dragonflight. No wonder people thought it looked mid. And that's why I've got some ideas on what Blizzard can do in their next expansions to get people back through sheer coolness. But before we get into that, there is that other piece of the puzzle. The cinematics not being cool is one thing, but the game not resonating with players, despite it being really good, that's another. Right, time to talk about why WoW mattered to you as an IP and where it went wrong. I could be a bit funny and say, it's no longer about strong old men. <laughs> the real point is, it's no longer about larger than life heroes. The modern era of WoW started with Legion. Uh, it was a send off to everything that had came before. The Burning Legion finally put to an end, but cracks were starting to show in what made Warcraft what it was. But, at the end of the day, Legion did hold fast. Now let me explain. To start, we have to go way back since Warcraft 3. The entirety of Warcraft has been about a few things. One of them is heroism and the sacrifices that must be made to do what is right. The second, and now it is a bit of a dirty word, uh, but it is corruption. 
I'd love to be all fancy and do a section in each, but the point is, Warcraft always uh, intertwined them. The entire history of the franchise is really about how power corrupts. Every great hero is a step away from being an even greater villain. We all remember the Wrath of the Lich King cinematic, that dialogue from Terranus describing Arthas' destiny as king. He did indeed become a powerful and great king, just not the way his father had hoped. He had fallen to that Lich King corruption for all of his own reasons. He was taken from the righteous path, willing to sacrifice his own principles to achieve victory, corrupted from hero to villain. Then we've got Illidan, who fell to corruption, but intentionally. He was an outcast for betraying his people's principles for power, uh, given a second chance out of necessity, but he made that profound sacrifice again. Uh, yes, because he felt he needed the power to achieve his heroic ambitions, just like with Arthas, but with a different outcome. He became a hero through that corruption. Grom Hellscream is on the other side of that, once corrupted by the cunning of Gul'dan and then freed. Grom's story in Warcraft 3 is of succumbing to corruption to achieve victory, just uh, like our other two, but unlike them, he has allies to help him break free of that, to right his own wrongs, and he of course makes the ultimate sacrifice against Manoroth, from villain back to hero. This is a core theme repeated for years. Our major villains are heroes corrupted by power. Illidan, Arthas, Deathwing, Garrosh, even the Legion, which is led by Sargaris, a titan gone wrong, and his armies, which uh, he raised through promises of power. The one part people don't think about as often is the other side. Heroes who don't go corrupted. In Wrath, the reason we make it to Arthas and survive uh, the fight is work done by the Argent Crusade and the Ebon Blade, especially Tyrion. Tyrion, a man who by most accounts is basically perfect. His unwavering faith and will to do what is right in the face of complete hopelessness of all the world's evil is what saved us in the end. What other characters do we have? Uther, Varian, Velen, Karn, Malfurion, Thrall, Khadgar. These characters are incredible aspirational heroes to contrast the villains of the setting. Every single character in WoW used to be of absolutely legendary, larger than life quality, whether they be good or evil. And it was this world of legends that you, the player, lived in. These heroes you'd look up to, these villains who, you know, you always knew they were just heroes who went wrong. But during Legion, this started to go away. Those myths were slowly but surely being dismantled, bit by bit. Tyrion died at the start of Legion in a way that did not match that legendary hero from Ice Crown. Malfurion was rendered once again a freaking helpless idiot, falling for the same trap he fell uh, to before again, leading to Ysera's death. Sylvanas' more selfish ambitions became apparent in Stormheim. Cadgar, Velen, and Illidan thankfully did kind of keep the, you know, they held the flag during that expansion. Then we take BFA, where things really just go off. Taronda, she started to show signs of uh, taking that dark power for good in a similar way to Illidan. Now, instead of letting any of that run its course or actually be cool, no, Shadowlands shoots that down. It insinuates that it was a mistake, but it does so in a way that dismantles that it was ever a sacrifice, and it has Illune turn her power off right before she was actually going to do something with it. And if she had have done something with it, then there would have been some more motivation and action and stakes in the plot instead of a cop-out. I mean, it was sort of a cool moment, but it never had implications beyond her realizing that vengeance is bad, but thankfully, before she really did anything super wrong, to the characters we cared about. BFA ultimately had no through line except Sylvanas was off her rocker, war is probably bad, but then all of that uh, ended weirdly with Nazoff stealing the stage in the least satisfying way possible. What worked for BFA more than anything else did was obviously Sarfang. He was troubled, yes, but he was the peak example of what Warcraft has always actually done right, and that is the true hero. And as I would jokingly say, crusty old hero dudes. Which, when you think about the people who made WoW, that's probably what they knew and what they looked up to. It is a shame that we have not been able to take this idea of strong old men and be able to apply it to other people. Instead, everything's just got lame. People, though these characters, standing by principles in the way that uh, just called you to arms alongside them. Shadowlands 
Well, that was different. Arthas was turned into a joke, Anduin's dance with dark power was forced upon him and didn't really have a meaningful impact, all while the Jailer was an extremely weak villain and nobody uh, really did anything. Uh, Sylvanas, the main character, ultimately had a compelling story, but that was in her book, and it was also largely devoid of the kind of uh, key moment heroism is what I'll call it, the big things that you kind of see, oh, oh shit, he broke through the, the ice cube, oh, look at the cinematic. Uh, no, that wasn't really there for Sylvanas. And then in Dragonflight, we have an absolute lack of heroes doing heroic deeds. Everyone seems lost half the time, the dragon aspects are mostly doing nothing, and everything comes down to a sappy, emotionally charged resolution instead of explosive actions that would roar determination. There is no visceral need to destroy villains like we had in the past. Perhaps Farak is getting there after torching Loam, but... As soon as that quest ended, all the fallout was gone, making it easy to forget, and so far the Ten One story hasn't really mentioned Farak since. Now, Ten One's story in some ways is good on paper. The Black Dragons fighting over their dad's legacy, showing their character weaknesses, and elaborating on how Neltharion felt. It's just, they forgot the Warcraft in any of this. There's such a focus on weakness, not strength. Everyone just mopes in this universe now. When we last saw Anduin, he was moping about what had happened. Tyrande and Malfurion are just done moping. Alex Straz is depressed about the past, and Osdorm is depressed about the future. Caligos is learning what family is, which is nice, and all that does make sense, and it is actually emotionally compelling, but there hasn't been a single heroic deed that has stolen the show in Dragonflight since Coronos, a random statue we'd never seen before, did something cool in a cinematic. Not one rousing speech about standing together to defeat whatever the great evil is. Not one character standing tall in the face of despair. All the side quests are well-crafted and emotionally engaging views into the hearts and experiences of the creators of this game. But it's just lacking the solid core of heroes standing strong and pushing back against equally epic villains. There's no Taran Zhu standing alone against Garrosh. There's no Tyrion praying for that one final blessing. There's no Yorel and Murad standing against Blackhand. No Anduin countering Garrosh's ambitions and almost dying for it. Nothing like Akana betraying Illidan to help us, righting his wrongs, kind of like what Grom did in Warcraft 3. So what's the actual solution? Heroes, ex-heroic villains, and cool cinematics. So here are two suggestions. The first is obviously coming eventually. It is the return of Yorel and A.U. Garrosh with their light-bound army. In whatever way this goes down, there is a huge amount of potential for straight to the point heroism and villainy. Turalyon and Bane making each other's uh, you know faction stand against the light bound as they assault capital cities. Maybe even Garrosh breaking free of the light's influence later. And Yorel, wow, she has got incredible potential for brilliant villain moments because she believes she's a hero. Even inspired by your very own character's actions, you inspire her to become what she ends up being. What happens when she faces our version of Valen down? How many people can she convince to be on her side? What does the final face-off look like? That is the kind of hype that people need to be amped up and roaring at BlizzCon. The other suggestion is Night Elves. They've been long overdue some aminosity, some real fuck this shit, I'm out energy. Having something go down in the Emerald Dream and having a host of feral animalistic night elves burst out and start tearing people apart after a key character perhaps uh, gives in to the untapped power of nature. The potential there is astounding. You can imagine the cinematic night elves coming out of stealth, druids shifting out of tree form in a brutal surprise attack. It'd also be a real ethical dilemma for Malfurion and Toronto to have some agency over and to actually be heroic leaders again, instead of a bunch of mopey, mopey, boring characters that no one can get excited for. Just look how Blizzard dismantled Toronto as a character who could actually be larger than life and cool. Look how they turned Night Elves from the thing we all saw in Warcraft 3 and thought was fucking awesome and turn them into the basically embarrassment that they are today, where the last thing the Night Elves are is cool. You don't want to be them, they're just lame. Heroes and villains are what Warcraft has really been about. 
since the very beginning. And that's what Blizzard need to return it to. If they want people to actually feel the way they used to about this IP. Because here's the thing. Dragonflight has got everything but the real core of Warcraft in it. Because if you have those epic tales of heroes and villains, and then you can throw in the emotional intelligence, the empathy, all of that stuff, the heart that Dragonflight has, then you're, you're going towards 10 out of 10 territory. For the longest time, WoW got by by only having epic moments, by only having big heroes and big villains, but not really having much of that like emotionally deep resonant content. Certainly nothing like the Blue Dragonflight quest that just dropped in the game. So that's the deal, Blizzard. You're almost there. You just need to remember what made your franchise explode in the first place. And it is certainly not anything that feels the way that the Dragonflight cinematic did. Okay, there you go. Let's uh, make WoW really fucking cool. People have got to be excited about this shit, right? Like, that, that's thing number one. Uh, uh, have we all just lost sight of that? Yeah, it's got to be cool. It's got to be cool. That, I think, is why uh, this expansion has not done turbo well by the numbers, even though it's retaining super good. Anyhow, that is it for today's video. Let me know what your experience with WoW has been. And do remember, if you're watching this video, there's a very large chance that you are selection biased into the group of people who did engage with WoW, even though it was no longer cool. I would say to you, think, remember, all the people who didn't come back, but who were there for 5.4, for Warlords of Draenor, for Legion, for the start of Battle for Azeroth, and then think, why are they not here anymore? There are many reasons, and today's video has been one of them. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time.